are around 1550. I don't remember our exact grading. Let's play a 10 minute game. Okay. E4. Okay, that's it. That is a game winning move. Aha, uh -huh. E5. All right. Been a while, actually, since we faced E4, E5. We are still playing four knights scotch, as you folks know. Okay, bishop c5. This is actually quite important that we face this move because the response to this move is perhaps not intuitive. I think some of you might be inclined to develop our bishop, but that simply transposes to the four knights without d4. And it's too good to be true. If, if this move existed, everybody would play it because it prevents d4. Un but fortunately for us, this move has a flaw, and it's the fork trick. Knight takes e5, which by now should be familiar to all of you. Now, in some positions, it's good. In other positions, it's not as good. In this position, it is quite good. Because, okay, bishop takes f2, classic mistake of, of this level. Um, and this is the reason why most people don't end up taking on e5 if they're seeing this position for the first time. Because this looks very scary, right? Black gives up the bishop for the pawn. So material is going to be equal because we took a pawn on e5. And it appears that our king is out in the open and for the rest of the game and there's nothing we can do about it and things are bad but this is a complete illusion because first of all depriving us of castling rights black has also made a major concession they've given up a million tempi that we can now use to grab control of the center the other thing black has uh, given up is the dark squared bishop which can be quite important in such positions so we start by playing d4 we start by controlling the center and we notice that none of these checks are even remotely scary. Our king can always hide on g1. There we go. Our king can and will hide on g1. Doesn't make as much sense to go toward the center. Now you might say, well, what about the rook? Isn't, aren't we concerned about the rook being locked in? We'll deal with that, right? We don't, we don't need to worry about that yet. It's not like we have to use our rook in the next couple of moves. One way or another, we'll figure it out. And one way of doing that is to go h3, king h2, and then moving the bishop out one way or another will eventually get our rook back into civilization. Okay, knight g6. Not a bad move. Not a bad move. And we have, a, we have choices here. There's multiple moves. They're all good. Um, we can take the sort of more quiet developmental approach and just go like bishop e3 and queen d2 and these types of moves. We can take the more ambitious central approach and go e5 and try to blow him off the board. A lot of you, I'm sure, are tempted by the move knight d5, but I, I'm a little bit cold toward that move. And the reason why is that it sends the queen back to d8 where it wants to go anyway. And after that, black can chase the knight away with c6. So both sides end up losing a tempo. Knight d5 isn't anything special. So I much prefer to play a normal developing move such as bishop e3. When in doubt, you transition back to moves that you know are good. Right? You're not sure what to do. Okay, can I develop my pieces? All right, now we can develop our other bishop to d3. The only slightly annoying thing that I wanted to prevent by playing queen d2 is, is knight f4. Bishop d3, knight f4 is ever so slightly annoying. You know what I'm saying? So let's begin by getting our queen to d2 and building a little battering. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we will want to play bishop g5 at some point. So this move has other benefits. All right. Where should we develop this bishop to? And there is no... I th No, there is a right answer. In fact, yeah, there is a right answer, I believe. There's two decent squares. The two decent squares are d3 and c4. But we want to play more ambitiously. We have a development advantage. You want to err on the side of you know developing more aggressively, so we play bishop c4. In addition, I have a feeling that he might go d6, and that loses a queen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you do the rest. I should do like a profit compilation. <laughs> now, there is one, one more pitfall to avoid. It's not rook f1, which allows queen h4. It is bishop g5. I've shown this trick before. Bishop comes to g5. Queen is literally trapped. And it's precisely because where bishop on c4 is guarding the only escape square. There we go. This is how you play tricky moves. You play moves that are good in and of themselves, but if they also contain a trick, then you should definitely play them.
yeah, this is over. I mean, it's a full queen for a piece. There, black can't even get two pieces. It's just a one minor for a queen. Okay. Let's try to make short work of the conversion. Um, again, I, I want to repeat this many times. Don't stress too much about my moves in this stage of the game. There isn't just one way to convert an extra queen. There's a million, right? And it, really anything within reason is fine. We can take on e7 here if, if we want. We can trade. I don't want to. I like my bishop. I don't see a need to trade further. The one thing I, I always say is you shouldn't go out of your way to trade more pieces, right? You don't need to simplify to win the game. So simplify if it's convenient. Don't simplify if it's not convenient and don't give up your nicest pieces. Well, same with d5, bishop d7, and we've given up an outpost on e5. I like h4, yeah. Let's go h4 because this is, this does two things at once. It threatens h5, which wins another piece. And it, it you know, you find a job for the rook. Now it's important to ask the Sam. If you're Mikhail Tal, you're probably taking on h6. I'm sure that's crushing. Um, but we can do something similar but in a slightly less outlandish way. Actually, you know, we can take on h6 here. I mean, what are, what is there to lose? Yeah, let's just take on h6. I mean, this is so winning. Gh, queen takes h6, and then h5 is coming. This is barely even a sacrifice. We're going to win back one of the pieces. I mean, I mean, you shouldn't even be surprised at this. We're going to go h5. The knight will have to drop back to h8, and then we have, for starters, we have queen g5 check, which picks up the other knight. You see that? It's over. And this is a purely intuitive sacrifice. I didn't calculate a single variation. Not a single one. Should we still play h5? Did f5 change what we do? We absolutely should go h5. And don't say no just because I asked. We absolutely should. Now if the knight moves, the bishop on e6 is undefended. Did you notice that when he played f5, the bishop on e6 was left undefended? I tell you to do that. It's very important. Anytime a pawn is moved, are there any pieces which are now undefended? You have to keep updating your perception of the board. Okay, let's get our rook into the game, our, our other rook, and then we can lift our h rook if we want. Okay, now the simplest is e takes f5. If knight takes f5, we can play rook takes, and the rook is uncapturable due to the pin. This f pawn is going to have, say this is completely resignable. Yeah, I like to ask questions whose answer is yes. I think like teachers do this too often where if they ask a question of that format, like should we do this or should we do that? The answer is always no. But with me, you never know. Like the answer might be yes. Um, okay. Well, we can win more pieces with F6. We can play H6. You know the hilarious... Okay, let's go F6. The hilarious thing is we might have to give our... Well, let's cross that bridge when we get there. So, a little nitpicky, guys, but what should we do? Queen takes e7 or rook takes f6? What is, like, technically the more accurate move, if you calculate? <laughs> take the rook first. Because if you take the knight, he goes rook 8, f7. And we'll have to give our queen up, because the rook on f1 is hanging. Yeah, we take the rook. And then queen takes knight, and I, I don't know why this guy hasn't resigned. Or gal. Boom. Let's go h6. Strike from the other side. If rook h6, we take the rook and we win the knight. Okay. Queen takes e4. Yes, I'm playing fast, but this is also very elementary. Well, maybe this guy should be playing for stalemate because <laughs> apparently I'm not very good at detecting them today. Not you resign now. He disconnected. Okay, fair enough. Very simple game. But I want everybody to remember that this bishop takes f2. Hopefully I was able to explain why this is not dangerous for white. So as you climb from 1500 to 1600, one of the things you need to stop taking for granted is, you know, is, the, is king safety. You need to learn how to better evaluate king safety. And what that often means is... In certain situations, you got to be able to press the button and keep the king in the center. Sometimes you don't want to castle at all. Sometimes you have to determine that it's okay for the king to be on e2 or f7. 
right? If you're below that rating, it's okay to sort of use shorthand. If the king is in the center, it's unsafe. If the king is open, it's unsafe. If the king is castled, it's relatively safe. But as you get toward intermediate level, you need to start being more specific, in my opinion. I don't know if that makes sense, but just one of the items that you should be thinking more actively about. Okay, finally. Yeah, not much to discuss here. I mean, I kind of talked about everything during the game, but uh, yeah, bishop c5 is, is a move, but it's not great because of this knight takes c5 idea. Okay, bishop c5, knight takes c5. I'm not reporting it. I wouldn't recommend that you report people who... I mean, choose your battles, you know. So... Who can tell me what is the traditional way that you are taught to meet this situation? There, there is a move that if you read chess books and stuff, they tell you that this is how you should play. Bishop d6, yeah. And the reason is that you should keep your bishop. And generally, that's right. You should play bishop d6 in such positions. Because if you're giving up your bishop so early is bad. And in fact, it's one of the only ways to win back the pawn. If you play bishop takes d4, then you've gotten yourself into even greater trouble. Because look at this x-ray d6 f4 Ugh. so bishop d6 is indeed how you should proceed and black is slightly worse in this position because white has better control of the center let me just open the game again sorry so i can analyze white has better control of the center white has the possibility of going f4 um in opening explorer i see that f4 is a move bishop d3 is a move obviously you're not afraid of bishop takes c3 check as i've said many times Queenside pawn structure is not as important when you castle kingside. The two bishops are important. The fact that white has a huge lead in development is important. So you can analyze this a bit on your own if you want, but I, it looks like either f4 or bishop d3 give an advantage. Sorry. But nonetheless, this is incomparably better than what our opponent did. Because after d4, it's already terrible. Queen f6, we just tuck our king away. And, and now I think tons of people will just go knight d5 straight away. And did, did I properly explain why I'm not as in love with knight d5 as it might as as you might be? You know, because it's almost like you're running out ahead of the other soldiers. Rawr! But the knight alone isn't gonna cause trouble. And the other thing to remember is that just because the queen is more advanced than it is on the initial score doesn't mean the queen is well placed. The queen has lost him the game. I already realized that using the queen and keeping it on f6 can be incredibly powerful. We only attack the queen when we need to. The threat is stronger than its execution. It's almost like you hear the first two letters, two numbers of your lottery ticket, they match and you cash in the $5 prize rather than hearing all eight number lottery tickets, right? Cash in the queen when it's worth it, not immediately. Bishop b3, knight e7, and that's exactly what we did. Bishop c4, now, black can refrain from d6, but the position's terrible. We go rook f1, h4, h5. I mean, there isn't even much to discuss here. This is just terrible. Everything makes sense. Any questions? But mainly just remember knight takes e5. Okay, looks like everything is clear. Everything makes sense. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. <laughs>